here and as you can tell by the box next to me I'm not trying to lift everything these days we are taking on Sakurako today. Sakurako is a monthly subscription box with artisan snacks more like snaku or boksu rather than being dagashi or more of the mainstream snacks you might see from Tokyo Treat which this is actually owned by Tokyo Treat. I've looked at some of it for allergens but do I remember what's in it? No. So we'll find out together. I love that it says, nice to meet you, let's have tea on the inside, my kind of people. And also right on top, they've got a warning for an updated allergen, which I definitely appreciate. Next, we got a note from the founder, more talking about how this is the March box and how it's all about Sakura, just very cute. And next, we've got their catalog. This always has all the information, the allergens. We've got some Maiko on the front who are apprentice Geiko or Geisha. So first up, we have some kind of senbei. I don't know what kind yet, I'll find that out. This says they are a spring senbei and mixing sweet and spicy. Intriguing. Oh, whoa, it's it's giant. So it's this one mega senbei, whoa. So if you haven't had senbei before, they're a puffed rice cracker, usually, often brushed with some kind of a soy sauce to create this really great savory crispy snack. I highly recommend them if you're into potato chips to kind of hit that same salty snack spot. Cheers. Mm. I, I had to take another bite. It's really wonderfully soy salty so it's got that really nice airy crispiness gets a bit soft at the end but not in a bad way just it's a very big cracker actually i'm not really getting much spice at all as i've had a second bite still lovely and soy flavored though like i'm just really enjoying how satisfyingly crunchy and lightly salty soy it is so next we have the sakura sweet bread which is a collab with sakura ko and tokyo bread very cool it's very soft on top almost moist actually which is impressive and it's just a very tender light pink color how pretty That's a very soft, dense bread. Almost a little too dense for me, to be honest, but I do appreciate the lightness of the flavor. I'm not really getting sakura or cherry blossom flavor here, but I am getting the apple that's in it. It's kind of a delicate, sweet floralness in the background. Yeah, that's more the apple to me than sakura, which isn't a bad flavor. I mean, if it's an apple bread, I'm gonna eat it. This tastes like, what I think of almost like an apple blossom bread. And is that a bad thing? No, it's just not tasting like cherry blossom to me at least. I want this for French toast though, though I swear I've seen this bread or bread like it at a Wajimaya, and I wish I could compare that, but can't easily right now. So next we have another Sakurako collab with Harabang, which is Baumkuchen, Sakura Baumkuchen. So if you haven't had Baumkuchen before, or don't even know what it is, I'd highly recommend looking it up. It is so cool. It's this giant spit of a cake where they bake it by dipping it and then roasting it by a fire or in an oven, so you get these concentric rings kind of like a tree. It's really, really cool, and you get these tender cakes out of it. I feel like you can't see the concentric circles as well in this one, but it's a very delicate pink color, which is kind of cool. Cheers. It's a very tender cake, very soft, and it reminds me a lot of a soft sponge cake, but I will say there's a weird sweetness this one, which might be the flavoring, which is not working for me. The cake though is really nice in terms of its texture, just very nice and delicate, but the flavor, it's kind of weirdly drying. Taking a break to find out what's in this box. One of the big differences between Sakurako, Boksu, and Snaku is that Sakurako has these home goods. They've been mainly plastic, which has been my big frustration, but I think this one is not plastic. Well, it's definitely not plastic. So this is a Sakura glass by Ichizuka Glass, and it's not dishwasher or microwave friendly, good to know. And it's a sake glass for Hanabi. Okay, cute. I like the overall design that's got cherry blossoms all around and some are colored in and some are just gold and that's really cool. I kind of wish the logo was on the bottom just because how I use glassware, but it's cute. Like if you like sake, this is a good size glass and it's glass and artisan made. Very cool. Next we have a green tea cookie. Yay! What's interesting is that it doesn't smell super strongly of tea. I'm really more smelling butter and sugary notes with tea as kind of a bitter under edge. Oh, cheers. does not mess around with the tea though once you eat it. It's like eating straight matcha that's crunchy. I think it's not super duper strong. It's not ceremonial matcha, but it is stronger than say a Starbucks matcha latte. It's just clean and clear and bitter, but not super duper bold with a nice crunch. Like I feel like this is actually a good cookie for tea for that reason, just enhanced with different textures in addition to tea flavor. We've got the chasubu and it's a tea picking dakwas or a sakura dakwas which is actually another collab with Sakura Co. for a Sakura version of their famed cake. So it's hard to really see here, but it's actually a sandwich cookie, and it feels kind of like I'm holding two green-colored ladyfingers. There's definitely a softness underneath the crispy layer, and a very, very thin, likely Sakura-flavored inside. Well, cheers. 
there is definitely a light hint of I think of sakura sweet almost salty even with a floral note and the cookies themselves are definitely the softest of a crispy exterior giving way to a tender interior again like ladyfingers where it's almost like a meringue where it's got give soft give like a soft meringue cookie can be i am kind of getting a little bit of a green tea bitterness too as well i think that emphasizes the sweetness of the filling i do like this it's not intense it's definitely a bitter gentle cookie but it's absolutely one i'd love to have with a fancy tea party we have three little manju and they are sakura manju cool these little steamed buns are going to have sakura infused sweet bean jam inside that's gonna be fun smells very sweet and also i remember manju generally being baked so i'm curious how this will be done cheers the bean filling is sweet soft and a touch floral really nice i love white bean filling so this is my kind of jam i i'm finding the manju exterior a touch dry but it's not impacting things much it might just be how they like to make them everyone's got their own palette this is actually a pretty good one if you're new to beans and desserts so i think people who don't grow up with white or red bean desserts think it's going to be like refried beans when it's completely different and absolutely worth trying next we have the yawaraka strawberry cookie and i'm curious to try this one because strawberry is always a risky one for me i do have water on standby don't worry so immediately what i'm smelling is freeze-dried strawberry like it smells like special k it's just straight up that freeze-dried strawberry with a hint of cream note cheers this is a hard one to explain so it tastes like freeze-dried strawberries then it opens into cream and milk the problem i'm having is i explained that it is so soft like, you think of cookies in the U.S., you think of a certain kind of softness. This is beyond that. This is trying to be, like, French toast tender. It's very, very soft, almost trying to be melting, more trying to be a ganache than a cookie with a crispy exterior. There's no crispness here. There is just soft. It's like eating the bean jam I just ate. It's just very, very soft. Is that a bad thing? No. I think if I'd been told it was a dessert and not a cookie, I wouldn't care. I'd be like, oh, this is neat. But I do think it's an interesting way to express how cookies can be. I'm glad I tried it. I think I'd probably avoid it because I'm worried how much strawberry there could be in this to be safe. But it was a neat experience. Next, we have ume senbei. Ume means plum. In this case, it's likely going to mean umeboshi or pickled plum, which can be quite sour. It's a fruit sour note that's kind of hard to describe unless you've had it, but I really like it. Oh yeah, it smells sour. It smells so sour. Cheers. So it's your normal senbei. It's a crisp rice cookie. Very crunchy, very satisfying, but it's covered in ume powder and it is tart and it's really good. It's hard to explain because it's kind of got that shiso undernoted herbalness too going on at the end. So it's puckeringly tart and herbal and crunchy and almost kind of a hint of a soy as well, kind of satisfyingly salty. And there's this like little bit of vinegary sourness to it. Yeah, it's really good. You have to argue like umeboshi and then yes, you will love this. So next we have the Gion Tsujiri Sencha, which is apparently noted for its combination of bold and umami flavors. Sencha is a really lovely type of green tea. I find it more mellow than matcha and it smells woody and just pleasant, gentle green tea. Cheers. It kind of just goes pop and then soft. So what you're hit with is the intensity at first, but how mellow it gets. I think this is actually a really good tea for tasting because it has such a long lingering note of just that little bit of bitterness. But it's not a strongly bitter tea. Just opening and ending. But the rest of it, very mellow and smooth. We are not done. Next we have the Gion no Sato Matcha Cookie. Apparently it has a matcha cookie exterior and a cream interior. Yeah, just a cute little roll or twill cookie. How cute. I love this style cookie. They just feel so unnecessarily fancy. Like when I was 10, this was the fanciest cookie until it stuck around forever. Oh, cheers. It's a thin, crisp twill cookie with an edge. So the first flavor really reminds me of a fortune cookie. Kind of that almondiness and sweetness. And it's super crisp. And then the cream hits you at that point as well. Nice and smooth. And then you get the green tea. The green tea is definitely end, but it is strong. You are not missing it. That's really cool. But eating a larger piece just now, I got the cream first, and then I've actually got more tea flavor. It's actually quite bold this time, quite intense. This is one for tea fans for me because it's more of a bitterness at the end rather than a sweet tea flavor. I actually really like it with the sencha too because then the sencha intensifies the cookie. Oh, I like that. So these are sakura arare, and they are bite-sized cherry blossom crackers with chopped nori or seaweed on top. 
So we're gonna get soy seaweed saltiness. I'm here for that. They smell very, very strongly of soy. So let's try them. Cheers. Compared to the earlier crackers, this is far more crunchy and has less of the airiness you get with senbei. And it's definitely more soy, more salty, and more toasty. This is far closer to eating a straight up potato chip, whereas the other ones kind of have the same feeling of potato chip or even just a rice cracker. This is far, far crunchier. Next, we have a sakura jelly with whole cherry blossoms in here, dang, and it's a collab with Madui Foods of Kanagawa. I feel like I'm looking at an adult Capri Sun. Oh dear. <laughs> there is so much liquid in here, and then there's the jelly on top, so very, very careful eating of this thing if you get one. Try and get some flowers in it. Cheers. The flavor itself is sweet, floral, a touch salty, sour even, like they're pickled cherry blossoms that are going into this. And the jelly itself is tender and soft and lovely. The hard part is that the flowers are really chewy. They're just, there's chewy. There, there's no way to get around this. There's chewy. And even the chewy that I'm not super excited to eat and I've eaten cherry blossoms before, I'm still finding this very, very chewy. I'd say if you're someone who's really texture sensitive, only eat the jelly and skip the cherry blossoms themselves. If you're interested in trying a new chewy thing, try them both. Last of the sweets, we have a peach jelly from Morihaku Confectionery in Gifu. It looks softly set. There's a great peach aroma in the air, sweet peach, and there's a chunk of cooked peach in there. I'll probably skip it just to be safe, but I'll eat the jelly. Oh, it's super soft set. My favorite. Cheers. It tastes like the softest set peach aroma. So when you think of jelly in the United States, you think of like really hard set like Jello Jigglers, which is good in its own right, though I like making grape juice Jello at this point. This though is soft, tender Jello. It melts almost immediately, just super soft. And this one is peach pulp aroma. So there's a little bit of canned fruit sweetness to it, but it's still definitely a fresh peach taste to it. This is my favorite. Last, we have the Nobunaga Shrimp and Red Wine Sunbae likely to be one of my least favorites because I'm not a big fan of alcohol and I'm not a big fan of overly shrimpy stuff in my crackers. Still worth trying. Oh wow, that smells shrimpy. Oh wow. Like immediately, just got out of the box, shrimp, dried shrimp. Very savory, very fishy. Wow. It is in a palmier style. I've seen described in some Japanese desserts as a pie style. It's got lots of thin, thin layers of crispy pastry and it's been sliced thin. There looks like a little bit of maybe salt, maybe some sugar on the top and it's highly caramelized to a deep golden brown. Like, it looks great. I'm holding my nose. <laughs> Cheers. Whoa, we're not a fan. Well, can I go back to the peach jelly? It starts off much better than I thought it would be. It's very crisp. It's well caramelized. But red wine and shrimp for me do not go together with sugar. And it's like dried shrimp. So you've got that dried shrimp fishiness and I don't like it. I'm not the target audience. I'll be back. I need to cleanse my palate and get this out of this room. Okay, since I think you already figured out my least favorite, let's talk favorites. The peach jelly, the daquas, and the ume senbei were my top three here. I really love the crispy, sour texture of the ume senbei. The delicate aroma of the peach jelly was just so refreshing and lovely. And the daquas had that great texture. Like, I love the daquas and the peach jelly. And again, my cha, that would be a wonderful tea time for me. But the big question remains, is this box worth it? And honestly, that's up to a lot of factors for how you feel about Japanese snacks and how hard it is to get Japanese snacks in your area. Because at $50 with shipping, yeah, it's $50. That's a lot of money to spend on some snacks. On the other hand, if it's hard to get Japanese snacks in your area and you love a curated box all set and ready to go that you could have like as a group experience or family night, that's kind of really cool. For me, I personally judge them whether or not I can get those snacks at a Wajimaya because a Wajimaya just has a lot of stuff. And I feel like this one's a bit above and below what a Wajimaya does. There are some things like the jellies that are a bit above a Wajimaya's quality, and the sunbei are at a Wajimaya quality, and the Baumkuchen is at or slightly below what I get at a Wajimaya. On the flip side, it's hard to get as many items at a Wajimaya for $50, so it's a nice way to try a bunch of stuff without committing to giant things of stuff. For me, my actual problem is with the glassware. I'm, I'm not going to use this. We don't drink sake, so it's just going to sit in the house being kind of cute. I'll give it to a friend if I can find a friend who wants it. But I wish there was a way to say, hey, I don't really want this, and I'd rather get maybe an extra treat or a discount off my next box or something. Because 
I'm sure the artisan put a lot of care and consideration into this. I just am not going to use it. Also, I wish there was more way to do customization. I really like their jellies. They've consistently put out really, really good jellies, and if I could just order a box of jellies, that's what I'd get. <laughs> Hands down. As it is, I'm likely not getting this box again for myself. On the flip side, if they suddenly just start selling jellies, I'm buying all of them. Fingers crossed. Editor Jess here. I went to Sakurako's website after doing the recording, and on Japan Haul, they do have most of the items that I wanted, and it looks like they might have free shipping. I need to look into this more, but I feel like that would be absolutely how I would buy. It's just dependent on whether or not free shipping is available, because the shipping really does hurt. But it's one I could see recommending to friends if they are just in the boonies and really want to try some Japanese sweets. So those are my thoughts on Sakura Co. I'd love to know what you think in the comments. Would you consider getting this box or is there another box that's caught your eye? And with that, I'll catch you next time. Laters! Yeah, if I seem stressed in the last bit of this, there's been a plane nearly every 30 seconds. Filming this is a nightmare.